Today I rise to adjourn in the memory of my dear friend, Graciano Gomez, a veteran, school board member, newspaper publisher, and community activist. Graciano, or Graci as we sometimes called him, was born in 1924 to Mexican immigrants in Wilmington, California. But as a boy, he and his family moved to Redlands, where he attended segregated Northside schools. During the early parts of his life, Graciano spent time taking care of his three younger brothers and sisters, teaching them in both English and Spanish, all while helping his father pick oranges and put food on the table for his family. His father died when he was 12 years old, placing him as a primary caretaker of his household alongside with his mother. Even as a young man, Graciano understood the importance of social responsibility. That it, was, that it was critical that you give back to the community more than you took from that community. When, it's Japanese, when Japanese families were interned during a presidential executive order in 1942, Graciano helped his interned friends by maintaining their homes while they were away. Upon his graduation from high school in 1943, Graciano was drafted into the Army Air Corps during World War II and served through the end of the conflict in 1946. As many of you know, many of our veterans of color who after World War II returned to their communities, they were not, they were not received with open arms. They experienced discrimination across multiple sectors, including, but not limited to, education, employment, and housing. This was no different for Graciano and many Mexican-American veterans just like him. Graciano, despite his obstacles, persevered, using his GI Bill benefits to become the first member of his family to become a homeowner and professionally work as a data processing operator at both Norton Air Force Base and with the County of San Bernardino. Upon his return to his community, Graciano was moved to do what his parents had taught him to do, prioritize community through social responsibility. He moved to DeVore in 1958, where through his involvement with education and his six children, became PTA president of the elementary school. This operated as a launch into various forms of community activism that continued to have a strong impact on his community and my community to this day. Graciano was a steadfast vocal advocate of communities of color during the civil rights movement. He and other Mexican-American activists challenged public and private sector employers to remove discriminatory barriers and provide greater opportunities to workers, particularly in education. He was the first elected president of La Confederación, a group of Mexican-American organizations which empowered underserved communities. He was appointed to the San Bernardino Unified School Board of Education in 1971, becoming the first Mexican-American elected to the school board where he helped lead efforts to integrate the same segregated schools he had attended as a young boy. He founded the Inland Empire Hispanic News Organization in 1987, inspired by efforts to empower and shine a positive light on Mexican Americans in his community. He worked as a paper's editor and publisher with no prior experience in the news business. The paper then became one of the largest circulated minority English language newspapers in the Inland Empire, running for 23 years and winning multiple awards. Colleagues, I could continue for days telling you the accomplishments of this community icon. He's received over 90 congressional, state, county, city, and organizational recognitions, and had recently an elementary school named after him in his honor in 2013. But Graciano was more focused on the number of lives he touched rather than the awards he received. This will ultimately be what, his, what he is measured by, the countless individuals, including myself, who are forever in his debt for the path he paved and the inspiration he continues to provide even after his death. 
Grassi is survived by his wife, Trini Gomez, four children, two stepchildren, eight grandchildren, I'm sorry, eight great-grandchildren, and seven great-great-grandchildren. Thank you, members, for your attention. Please join me in mourning Graciano's passing and celebrating his life. Thank you.